Hi guys and welcome to another Review Reviews video. Now what we have here today is something really interesting and unusual. Now it's uh, called E1DA or ADA or however you want to pronounce it, but this is actually E1DA, PowerDAC V2. It has only one USB input and only one output, which is actually balanced out 2.5 millimeters for pole jack. That means you can only use it with balanced headphones cables. No way to connect your typical single-ended 3.5 millimeters jack like uh, most of headphones are still using. But as you can see, it, it looks quite, quite interesting. It's made out of metal. There's um, at the back there is like diagram how it works and what what is in there and that's a funny part because this one does not use traditional DA converters there is no Sabre, AK, Cyrus, Burr Brown or, or any DAC inside for that matter it uses pulse width modulation and amplifies digital signal basically I will not go into details because that's boring, for the most of you at least, but um, regarding functionality, it might look like a portable device, but its portability is not really its strongest suit. Now in the box, which is fairly small, you see it's, it's just device, and with it you get typical USB cable, so you can connect it to your PC, and uh, you might think that this is good one to be connected to a smartphone, but actually no, it draws too much power. And you get the cable to do that, but if you decide to do it, as you can see, this one goes to your phone. This one goes here, it's like contraption like this. But you have also additional USB for external power supply. You cannot use this one directly from your phone, it just takes too much power. And uh, in my opinion, if you use something like this, plus external power supply, it's not really all that portable, right? <laughs> it, 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 uh, it's not something I would like to carry with me in my pockets. So I'll treat it as a desktop device instead because I think that that's what really is. So before we continue to talk about it, let me quickly connect it. Okay, now it's on and as you can see, there is only one LED here signifying it's powered and that's it. It's just automatic. It turns on with your PC, it turns off with your PC also and um, it heats considerably while working. So don't be surprised, there is nothing uh, wrong with your unit when you after maybe half an hour touch it and first insti instinct is like oh this is hot. Another thing regarding usability is uh, as you can see it's really um, glassy surface and there is no grip so don't use rigid USB cables or things like that it, it will just go around your desk as a hockey pack as I mentioned. Uh, I think some rubber feet would be really nice touch in the box, but that's cheap. I'll, I'll probably add four little rubber feet uh, on my unit. I think that would keep it in place better and also increase um, cooling because as I mentioned, it runs really hot. But all that aside, how does it actually sound? Well, I connected my hi fi mans uh, using balanced cables, of course, because I mentioned there is only balanced output and first what I did is just controlled the unit through my windows like I would control volume with windows or with my player and I was really happy with the sound quality you know there is a proper power coming from this small unit there is really good balance for example bass notes are well controlled, they're punchy, they're, they're also weighty, but there's real control and firmness to them. What also surprised me is mid-range, that's actually quite full, the vocals are present, they're 
forward in the mix, there's a lot of details, but the details are never tacky. They never grab for your attention or, or, or anything like that. And the same goes for the highest frequencies. There is plenty of details, but never too bright, uh, too analytical or anything like that. And regarding the soundstage, everything again was really decent. Like there's enough room, uh, layering is quite decent. I, I never feel that the sound is cramped inside of my head, but ev everything just lays out nicely. And at that moment, I was already really happy with its sound quality. I quickly compared it to FX Audio DAC X6 MK2, and I found that they're quite similar in sound quality, but this one is um, kinda sharper and harsher sounding. And I ended up preferring this one maybe by a little bit, but I'm not saying it's better, I'm just saying I prefer the sound signature with fuller mid-range and everything. But things really take interesting turn when you start using this one with its app. And uh, there's an app you can download on Play Store or Apple Store, however it's called. And um, when you do that, you connect it to your phone using Bluetooth. And this is the app, I'm not sure if you'll see it on camera, quite good. This is the DAC that's already recognized. I named it Power DAC V2. And when you enter, you see some fundamental controls here first. For example, volume, uh, bass, treble, loudness, things like that. There are even filters and uh, it's not some simple EQ filter, but advanced PEQ um, with detailed um, settings for every band and things like that. I will not go into details here because it's a whole, whole other topic, but I just wanted to mention this. When you actually use the app to control the volume and you use exclusive connection mode from your Windows player, such as, for example, FUBAR, or in my case, I tested it with Tidal app, a Tidal streaming service. So you don't do software volume control you use exclusive mode, so you can basically override any windows altering with the signal, no upsampling, downsampling, or, or things like that. And you control the volume on the DAC itself. From the app, the sound quality gets even better. Yeah, it does, it really does. Now, that good balance is still there. There's just more clarity like lower uh, noise floor, I think, I suppose. It's, it's not like there is any noise before that, but now you can hear more through the recording and everything sounds just a little bit cleaner and crisper and I, I can really hear tone decay nicely. And at that moment, I was really feeling, wow, I cannot believe this small device this really hot small device, going for 65 bucks sounds like this. And when listened that way, controlled over the app, I definitely start preferring this one to X6 here. It just has more clarity, more fullness. There, there is no any sharpness or thinness to talk about. It's actually really mature, really full sound. I just really enjoyed it. And then I went uh, a notch higher. I thought like, let me compare this to more capable units. And for that, I used Earman Sparrow here and Earman TR amp that you can see here. And this little guy actually went neck on neck with Earman TR amp here. I felt it even has more bass control, better grip, even fuller mid-range. This one maybe has slightly more open, higher frequencies, maybe a little bit more of those micro tiny details. But as I mentioned, this one is, is really punching back and all in all, I even think I, I preferred this one, just purely on, on a sound quality.
I know it's some of you will say, well, it's not a fair comparison. This is a single ended unit. This one is balanced output. But um, if you have a choice, if you can use both on your headphones, I'm just comparing the sound quality. And uh, simply, this unit for its price sounds outstanding. And uh, I think it, it goes without the question, but I'll just clarify it because I mentioned it's neck on neck with TRM here. It sounds better in my opinion than things like Fio K5 Pro, uh, Zen DAC, uh, I already mentioned FX Audio X6 MK2. Uh, what else? I, I don't know, like uh, topping the X3 Pro, things like that. Now, unfortunately, I didn't have any balanced cables at the moment to try any of my in-ears with it, so I'm not sure how it performs with really low impedance in-ears. Is there any hiss or anything like that? If any of you tried it that way, please leave the comments below the video. But when it comes to big cans, the sound quality is definitely better than I'd expected for this price. I'm almost tempted to call it a giant killer, because currently there's nothing up to 200 bucks or 250 maybe that I'd rather listen my headphones on. It's a really great unit. I'm using it actively as my desktop DAC amp these days. That said, as you can see, regarding sound quality, no reservations whatsoever. It's simply astonishingly great sound quality. Uh, that all goes when you use it with app to control the volume. If you use software controls for volume, it's still really great sound, but that definitely diminishes its quality a little bit. If you want to hear everything this unit has to offer, you have to control its volume through an app, not through the windows and not through some software-based volume control. And basically, the only reason I'm not calling this one a real giant killer is, well, <laughs> there are more reasons than one, actually. Uh, in terms of sound quality, it really is. But uh, first of all, it has only balanced output, that means you're limited with the number of headphones you can connect to it. But I suppose that's the future. Sooner or later, we'll all have to consider benefits of balanced connections. The second thing uh, that bothers me more, honestly, is that this is basically a desktop product. It's just not portable device. Because I showed you earlier uh, what kind of contraption you have to use just to power it if you want to connect it to your phone. And even if you are that willing to do that and to connect external power supplies and things like that, this heats like crazy. I, I don't want like 50 degrees uh, rock in my pocket. It's, it's, it's so hot. And uh, because of that, I consider it to be a desktop product. But I really don't like that it doesn't have any buttons or any controls on it, at least for volume control. If I do something like play video games, there is no volume slider in a video game. And you know, there is like a really loud sequence, boom, something really loud, and I quickly want to decrease the volume, but hey, no buttons. So I just have to turn on my phone and quickly find the slider and turn it down. And few times it happened that my phone and this one lost connection. And then I have to reconnect it and then again enter into the app and decrease the volume on the slider while some loud explosion for, from a video game is blowing my mind. And I really don't appreciate that. You know, if it's primarily a portable device like Dragonflies and so on, then it's okay to be really small and without any controls because it's always attached to a phone that way. You always have your volume rocker ready at your fingertips. 
But this is a desktop product, and I really don't like it doesn't have a volume control on it. Okay, rant about volume control over. If you're okay with that, if you think it's not a big nuisance to you to, to have to do that over the app, it's really interesting device. Great sound quality, absolutely great sound quality. It even has some really innovative things going on for it through app. Like you can use treble and bass control from the app and you can also make really advanced EQ settings and you can save them as presets, for example, for, for different headphones. All of that is really great, really innovative. And that would basically be it. It's a really great sounding device, some really interesting features. It's a little bit quirky and uh, you have all the info. You can decide for yourself. Is that something you're okay with? So that would be all for today. And if you like this video, please click like and subscribe. Also share this video with your friends because that would really help this channel grow and have even more interesting reviews.